Hello there Visual Basic Fanatics and YouTube. Um, okay, so I haven't created a video in a very long time and I've had a couple of requests on how to work with classes and um, also how to pass information backwards and forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on classes because classes actually cover both of those topics. So um, to start off with we need some history and the history of classes actually started in Visual Basic 3, Visual Basic 4. When Visual Basic uh, 3 and 4 was created, there were no classes. Okay, They used something called a structure. So um, I'm going to create a project, a forms application, and um, I'm just going to quickly put a button here, just to demonstrate how a structure used to work. So um, structures, you can still use structures in your programming today. It's just that they are very limited. And that is why um, classes were created. And classes were created to obviously take over the function of the structure. Okay. So what were structures? Structures allowed you to create an object. And yes, that is where object-orientated programming came from. It has got nothing to do with your controls. Okay. Object-orientated programming comes from the fact that you can create your own objects. So I'm going to create here a private structure and I'm going to call this uh, creature. Okay, my creature is going to have the, the number of legs okay, as an integer and we're also going to have the, the length as integer. Okay, so what I've done now is I've actually created a, um, an object. Okay, this was in Visual Basic 3, Visual Basic 4. And um, to be, by creating a structure, I was, um, well, people used to be able to work with them in much similar ways as classes. For instance, I can create the, my insect as a new creature. And there we go. You can now see that the creature is a strongly typed name within the compiler itself. I can then go my insect the number of legs equals 100. Okay, my insect dot length equals two inches. Okay, so we will be, we are able to create uh, a single instance of this object. Um, if you wanted to create a whole list of these, you would go the insect list as um, a new list of creatures okay um, that will allow you then to work with this creature once again as a strongly typed namespace within the compiler I'll just add one of these and just say um, me sorry uh, insect list dot add my insect so here I've created a list of creatures and um, I've created a single instance of a creature I've then added this insect into the list okay if I wanted to find out any any of the insects within the list I would go um, for each sorry Okay, for each, oops, double that. For each um, bug, I would say, in um, insect list. Okay, sorry, for every bug as creature, just to determine that it is an actual creature um, in insect list. Okay. We're going to go just say uh, in ESG box, message box. I want to have the bug dot number of legs. So it will then run through each of the ones in the list and produce the number of legs. Just to give it a quick run, should give us 100. There we go. Okay. So um, you can see that uh, the structure itself was very handy, especially when you, when you started working with um, different a program is working on the same project you would be able to create one instance 
or one um, object okay and this object would have been able to be used wherever in any class or form that people were working in so it helped a lot of people by for instance creating if you had an account you would structure an account the account number you would have the account details for instance and a person would be able to create a new account add and actually start using it with um, functions and those functions would be able to help um, programmers to work faster better and everyone would understand the namespace itself but unfortunately a structure was very very limited because structures um, don't have a property for instance okay and this number of legs is a declaration so um, if I change if I move back here you would see that that blue little box that's a declaration get type that's a function so it's not actually a property that we're dealing with and therefore anyone can add and remove information to this structure by simply mere, merely just allocating the, in the value to it for example um, equals 100 okay that is just creating as uh, I just mentioned um, adding a value anyone can add the value but if I want to restrict a programmer from not adding a value how am I going to restrict it I can't because the moment this structure is in a private or in a public form and it can be used anywhere then anyone would have access to this value anyone would be able to add and remove this value and that's where classes start coming in classes started restricting and allowing people to um, manipulate what information is available and is not available for other programmers okay so this is the first section of uh, working with classes I know I haven't actually touched classes yet but um, going through creating structures are actually very important because that will show us in the next video um, how alike the two are and um, what the differences are okay so I'll see you in the next video